good evening and welcome to our bedtime story tonight. I'm trying to think of the best story I could tell you this evening, so I went to the best storyteller ever, which is, well, Jesus. And he told this amazing story, which I really enjoyed over the years. And it's a story about a dad. A really good dad, and he, uh, he had a beard. I don't know if good dads always have beards, but this one did. But this dad, said Jesus, had two sons. Which is really quite good, having two sons. I have to say, maybe not as good as having two daughters, but he had two sons. He was the best type of dad, though. He loved both his boys. He loved them equally. He loved them with all their heart. He would have done anything for his two sons. And Jesus was telling us that God was like that. But the man's two sons were very different. The older son was very hard working. If his dad wanted him to do anything, he would do it. He would do anything for his dad and he would work very, very hard at it. But his younger brother was very different. It's strange how two sisters or two brothers can quite often be quite different. Well, these two were very different because the younger son, well, he was a bit wild, really. He liked to do his own thing. He was an independent spirit. But dad loved both his boys. And then one day, the younger son came to his dad and said something that made his dad very sad. Dad, he said. I want, see, sons and daughters quite often say to dads, I want, but what came next really shocked his dad. He said, Dad, I want, I want your money. You know how when you die, I'll get half of your money. I don't want to wait till you die. I want it now. Which made his dad very sad. But the dad loved his son. And so he did something which might seem quite strange to us. He took all his money, he divided it into two, and he gave his younger son half of his money. Well, yeah, Beezer, thought the younger son. He left home, he went away, he went a long way away to a big city, uh, maybe like Hamilton. Well, you know, maybe further than Hamilton and a bit wilder too. So let's say like Edinburgh. He went far, far away. And when he got there, with all that money, he decided to have a good time. He bought all the things he wanted. He threw big parties. He had lots of friends because people like folk who are spending lots of money. So he had lots of friends and he had a really, really good time. But of course, when you spend lots of money, it soon begins to run out. And so the younger son found that his money ran out. But when he didn't have any money, the friends didn't really want to know him either. And things got worse because in that big town, Hamilton or Edinburgh, there came a famine. There wasn't any food. And so the younger son got very, very hungry. And he decided he'd have to find a job. There was only one job going. And that was on a farm feeding pigs. Smelly, awful pigs. But he took the job. And he sat there looking at the pigs and looking at the food he was giving the pigs. The horrible, smelly pig food. And he thought, I'm so hungry, I could eat this food. But nobody gave him any food at all. And then he began to think. The Bible says he came to his senses. He began to think. And he thought, you know, my dad has people that help him in the farm. He gives them jobs and he pays them okay. And he makes sure they've got enough food. And he treats them very well. And here I am, his son, and I'm starving. He said, I, I, I can't go home and expect my dad to take me back as his son because I've spent all his money, I've done this awful thing. But maybe he'd give me a job, like one of the servants, and then I'd have enough to eat. So he started walking home. 
It was a long way. And as he went, he was thinking about what he was going to say when he saw his dad. Dad, I'm so sorry. I've sinned. I've done the wrong things. I've offended you. And I, I've upset God too. And, I, I, and I'm not worthy to be your son. Will you just give me a job like one of the, 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 the servants so I've got food? Meanwhile, back at Dad's farm, Dad had been doing something which strikes us as quite strange. His dad had been getting up every morning and standing watching the road to see if his son was coming back. Every day he did this. He was so sad his son had gone away and he loved him so much he just wanted him back. And then one day he saw him walking back, his face tripping him, coming back so sadly. And the father just began to run down the road to meet his son. And when they met one another, the son started, oh, I'm so sorry, I've sinned against God and against you and I'm not worthy to be your... But he didn't get any further. His dad threw his arms right around his little boy. Gave him a big, big kiss, even with the beard. He said to the servants, Bring some new shoes for my boy. And then go and kill the fatted calf because we are going to have a big party because my son, he was like dead and now he's home and he's alive again and I'm so delighted. Let's have an enormous big party. Well, as the party began to take place and the music began to go, out in the fields was the older brother. Now he was out in the fields because he was working very hard, keeping the farm going, doing all the things his dad wanted him to do, making sure everything was right. And he began to hear the music and the noises of a big party. And so he said to one of the servants, what's going on? Why is there a big party? Well, said the servant, your brother is home. And your dad's just so happy because it's like he's back from the dead and your, bro your, your dad is so happy he's throwing this big party. Well, the elder brother was not pleased. In fact, he was very angry and he refused to go in. His dad came out to him. Son, he said, please come in. Come and share my joy, your brother was dead and now he's alive again. The brother, the older brother said, it's not fair, he said. I've been doing exactly what you wanted every day. I've been here. I've been carrying out your instructions. I've been doing good things in your farm. And my wasted, wasteful brother has been off having a party and spending all your money and treating you like dirt. And he comes back here and you have a party for him. I'm not going in. His dad said to him, son, you've done so many good things. You've done everything I've asked. Everything I have is yours. I love you so much. But right now, I'm so happy because your brother he was like dead and now he's home and it's like he's alive again and I just want to rejoice. Please come in and share my joy with me. Well, we don't know what happened next because Jesus stopped the story there. Do you think the brother went in with his dad and shared the party or did he stay outside continuing to huff? If he came in, then the story all ended happily and everybody was happy. Well, except for the fatted calf. Jesus told that story for a reason. He was trying to say to us that God loves us very much. Maybe we've done things that are wrong. Maybe we feel that God shouldn't really love us when we do things that are wrong. But God tells us that he still loves his children. That's why he sent Jesus. And sometimes we can be like the older brother as well. We can do all the right things and think we've done fine and yet we don't love like our father loves. We don't forgive like our father forgives. Both of these brothers in different ways didn't treat their dad very well. One did all the bad things and the other 
Well, he just didn't share his father's joy. For us today, let us know these two things as we stop. God loves us so much that he will always forgive us. But he calls us also to forgive other people too and rejoice when their lives are changed by God's love. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. Help us to know that we're forgiven. But help us also, Lord, to know that your love means that other people are forgiven by you too. And help us to be like you, our Father, to be those who are not just forgiven, but who always try to forgive. Just as Jesus forgave. Let us know your love tonight. Amen. Well, that's our story for tonight. So have a good night. Thank you.